Hey everyone, welcome to Mountain Beast Mysteries. There's a lot of stories of UFO um, experiences out there. Cases where people are in actual contact with beings from other worlds, some sort of alien beings. And the kind of beings that people are encountering varies from case to case. There's so many different varieties. You have the gray aliens, you have Nordic looking aliens, you have all these light entities people encounter. And uh, a lot of these stories are not real. A lot of them are hoaxes, they're made up stories, but there are a few of them that are very hard to discount and discredit. And the story I'm gonna talk about today is one of those cases. It's the story of Carlos Diaz. He was a photographer from Mexico and throughout like the 80s and the 90s, even before that when he was a kid, um, he was seeing things in the sky. He was seeing these UFO craft that appeared to be made of light. And throughout, you know, his time seeing these things, because he was a photographer, he was able to get some really, really good images and some really, really good footage of these craft. And the craft that he saw, it, like the images of these craft and the footage, it's been analyzed by many people from many different places around the world, from like universities like Harvard, like it's been looked at by very serious people who know what they're doing and in most cases they're like yeah this is this has to be legit they can't discount his images because when they're put up to scrutiny and, and like detailed analysis it's really really hard to debunk them they they do appear to be genuine um but the craft you can see some of them here they they are orange light ships of some kind they appear to be made of light they don't have sharp edges on them they're not metallic they're not the typical ufo saucer they're very smooth looking almost organic looking and it's very interesting because it's described like these craft are described as being made of light or if you look even further into the story, he describes them as being made out of some sort of plasma of some kind. And it's the plasma that you would find like in your body, that kind of plasma. They're almost organic in nature. And I find that fascinating. Supposedly the way these craft are piloted is that the beings that are inside of them, controlling them, are actually somehow connected to the craft itself. It's not like they're in like the cockpit and they're moving around joysticks and pushing buttons and whatnot. They're actually connected either biologically or consciously somehow to the craft and they're able to fly them around. These craft have no doors on them or anything like that. To enter the craft, supposedly you can just walk right into it. And that is pretty amazing. What are these things? How is that even possible to be inside of something and to be able to fly around inside of it? Yet, you know, you can walk in and out of it just by <laughs> walking right into it. How do you stay inside of it? Like, what kind of technology is that? It's pretty crazy stuff. But this is all supposedly what these things are, you know, according to Carlos Diaz. Um, the, the cool thing is, is that these craft were seen by many other people in the area. Uh, these were seen in a place called Tepetzlan, uh, Mexico. And um, coincidentally, there's like an old, I think like a 900 year old pyramid in the area. There's lots of old ruins and whatnot. And um, that's generally where these things have been seen. Uh, in 1981, he had his first major encounter with one of these light ships he had seen them back when he was a kid but like he started really having like close contact experiences in the early 80s in 1981 he was uh, driving out to a place called Ayuska National Park I believe it was called and uh, he was on an assignment with a magazine that he was working for and uh, I think it was to document the sunrise, take some sort of sunrise photos and whatnot. So he had a camera with him. This was in the middle of the night. He's driving out to this place. You know, he wants to get there for the sunrise. He's supposed to meet somebody else there. 
a journalist of some kind. Uh, but he notices a light. Turns out this thing's a UFO craft. It's one of these orange light ships. And um, he's in his car, he's sitting in the driver's seat, he takes his camera and he rests it on the steering wheel and he starts snapping photos of this thing. So yeah, he, he fires off a bunch of shots and uh, out of nowhere, his car starts shaking. So he gets out of the car and while he's standing outside of the car, he's, he's got his camera resting up against it and he, he takes a few more shots of it flying away and it flies away relatively fast, disappears. Sometimes these craft like will appear out of nowhere and they'll just be hovering there and they'll have like a strange kind of wobble to them uh, and they can just disappear into thin air they don't have to like travel away they can just appear and disappear which is really interesting there's a lot of uh, cases of craft doing that um but yeah that was in january of 1981 so after this experience happened he was like so amazed by it he was so close to this craft, which you look at these photographs and it looks like these things are, are close because of the size of the craft. But like the, the, all the photographs and all the videos have been analyzed and uh, apparently they estimate this ship or these ships. I don't know if they're all different ones or if they're the same craft, but apparently they're like at least 60 feet in diameter. So they're pretty big. And to see something like that in the sky up close must be like pretty amazing. Uh, but he was in shock from that experience and um, multiple times he went back there to try and see if it would happen again for like, I think it was like two months or so, two and a half months. When he, he did go back one day, it was in March, late March. Um, and it was like a really rainy day, it was a really foggy day, like terrible weather, and he ends up going out to this spot, and there was a fork in the road that would go to the place where he had that first encounter where he was in his car, um, but the weather was so bad, and he probably had a lot on his mind, and it was like foggy and everything, he ended up driving, taking like a wrong turn, and going down the wrong road, where he ended up seeing a light again in the, in the fog and in the mist. And uh, he gets out of his car and uh, he ends up hiking like up a slope, up a valley slope, like a hill where he can get a better view. And eventually this thing is like 45 meters away from him or something. It's relatively close where he can make observations of it. And uh, he was kind of hiding on the slope behind some rocks, um, you know, totally surprised to see it again after two and a half months and he, he has time to make observations he said that like he was over and over again observing it in, in his head and taking mental notes of what the craft looked like all the details because i guess on that experience he didn't have his camera with him um but anyways he's watching this craft and out of nowhere apparently he felt someone's hand on his shoulder and then he passes out when he comes to, he's in the far, like in the jungle, and his clothes are dry, which doesn't make any sense. That's how he knew something weird happened, and he was gone for a while, because when he got out of his car to walk up that hill, like it was rainy and foggy, and his clothes got wet and everything, but when he came to, after he fainted and passed out, his clothes were dry. And anyways, he ends up getting out of there. He makes it back to his car. He's able to find his car. And um, parked by his car is another vehicle. All of a sudden, there's like a red Volkswagen, some model of Volkswagen. And there's a guy there. So Carlos gets in his car. And this other guy walks up to him. And the guy says, like, how are you doing? He's like, oh, I'm doing all right. <laughs> and then the guy says... If you want to understand what happened today, what you experienced today, come back to this spot tomorrow. So this guy that just happened to be parked there knew something had happened to him somehow. He looked like a man, like a humanoid, like a human being. He was like a man driving a Volkswagen. So anyways, the next day, Carlos comes back and that guy is there 
but there's supposedly like 20 or so kids all around him being entertained by him. I guess he was telling some sort of story uh, or describing to them like the nature of existence here on earth and the relationship between like us and the natural world. He was telling them something along those lines. And then he noticed Carlos was there watching. He actually came back, he noticed him. Um, then he gave the kids some toys to play with, like some balls or something. And then he, you know, approached Carlos and started talking to him and explaining it to him that um, the stuff he experienced, I can't tell you everything, everything right away because it'll be too much, like too much of a shock. So you'll find out slowly over time everything that happened during that experience. And supposedly he was like taken to some sort of cave where there were other beings and other light ships like inside this cave hiding out somewhere and he was shown all, all sorts of things but um that was the first contact experience he had and uh the guy the other guy who was telling him this stuff was apparently he claimed to be the one who touched his his shoulder before he fainted there so he's, he's one of these beings one of these beings piloting these craft is he an alien like is he an interdimensional being is he like a men in black type thing well like who knows who knows who these people are where they came from i don't know <laughs> there's some sort of extraterrestrial being um is that his true form like the human form is that what he actually looks like or is he presenting himself to us that way who knows um, it is described that these beings sometimes appear as just light beings. They look like light, not humanoids, you know? They look like light. The craft themselves are huge. They're massive. There's one piece of footage you can see here. This craft is behind a tree, and you can see it's got a really weird motion to it. It almost looks like it weighs nothing, and it's kind of like jiggling up the screen. And you can see the trees kind of wobbling too. Well, it almost looks fake the way it's moving. It looks like it's so light, like it would be a model or something. But that tree, they went to that tree, like reporters and, and people, like he took them back out to that tree. They asked him like, we got to see this tree because we got to be able to verify this to see if this is real. And he was like, yeah, no problem. He had no problem taking them out to where this tree was. Um, to get like a size reference this tree is huge like the diameter of the trees they say it's 30 feet and they estimate the craft was at least 60 feet they went out there you can see in the footage the size of the tree compared to these people measuring the distance from the tree to where carlos was like that is a big craft and it doesn't appear that it's following the laws of physics here in this reality it's like it's operating on its own plane of existence somehow, but it's visible to us. So I don't know how that works, but it's very impressive, impressive um, footage. Um, and this is probably one of the most famous shots you can see here. This is um, the lookout where he shot that first photo in 1981. You can see the guardrail in front of his car. You can see the reflection of the craft on the hood of his car and then the craft itself obscured kind of on the sides by the trees and vegetation which is really hard to fake especially with something that big like there's a lot of these ufo cases that have been debunked like i'm gonna bring up the billy meyer case billy meyer had hundreds of photos uh, video examples um lots of notes that he had written on his ufo contact case but it's been debunked like the guy was taking pictures of like things in books and trying to say that they're real. Like he was taking pictures of pictures that were in books, pictures of dinosaurs. And then he would say like, oh, the, these aliens took me back in time to see dinosaurs and I got these pictures. Well, they were just <laughs> pictures of illustrations in a book. And then he would do that uh, with stuff that he would see on TV. Like he took a picture of these act actresses on this show and then he said that they were these alien beings that he was encountering while well, he was just taking pictures of his TV screen. Like he was doing stuff like that. It was, it's all been debunked to the Billy Meyer case. Yet this Carlos Diaz case, 
they couldn't debunk it. And they had like some serious people looking into it. Um, one guy gave him a camera. He said, you keep this camera and you leave it running all night. Like try to get footage. I want you to film this thing on this camera. And he like would, he would do all this stuff and he would accomplish all the goals. He would get the footage. Um, and like I said, like everyone else, a lot of other people in the area were seeing these same craft. Other people were getting footage. It wasn't just him. So there was definitely something going on. And there have been, I, I've noticed other people from around the world who have captured similar craft on camera. So, yeah, this is probably one of the best long-term UFO contact cases out there. There's a documentary called The Ships of Light. Uh, I have a link down below in the description if you want to check it out and hear the story from Carlos himself being interviewed on camera. Um, his family's in the documentary, like his parents, saying like, yeah, like he was seeing this stuff when he was a kid. Like he took pictures out his bedroom window. Him and his brother, I guess, shared a bedroom. And his brother wanted nothing to do with the UFO stuff because it freaked him out. But Carlos would see these things out the window and he took pictures of them back when he was a kid. That's usually what happens is these people... And it's at, at some point in adult life, we'll start experiencing this stuff and then they'll realize, you know, oh, this has been happening actually for quite a while. Or they'll remember being a kid and actually seeing this stuff. It usually goes one of those two ways. I woke up by a strange feeling in my solar plexus. I saw a light reflecting on the wall and it entered from a small triangular opening the curtain left from the window. I got very curious and so I got up and looked out of the window to see what was going on. When I opened the curtain very slowly, I saw up in the sky a yellow object very much in the shape of an egg which was suspended there. I shared the bedroom with my brother, so I called him immediately and said, Antonio, Antonio, come and see, there's a UFO. He put his blanket above his head and said, what, a UFO? I don't want to see a UFO, I want to sleep. So I kept on looking at the object for some moment, and then the object left with a very high speed. The next day I set the alarm clock for the same hour I saw the object that day and I was waiting that it returns and indeed I saw the object again and after a few seconds the object flew away again. So on the fourth day, I had my camera ready on a tripod with a cord trigger. The object came from east to west over the city, and I was able to take a picture. I opened the shutter for four seconds. I was afraid it would fly away, and I captured it on film. I was very glad I did that, to have an evidence in my hands for my brother. Anyways, you guys can look deeper into this case uh, with the links I have down below. And uh, dig as deep as you want, and let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Thanks for watching this video. We'll see you next time on Mountain Beast Mysteries.